This little thing, is called the Type 75. It is a vintage Chinese military Geiger counter. Hiding within this innocuous looking device, is a dark secret. Inside, lies an incredibly radioactive lump of strontium-90. So join me as I take a closer look at this, interesting but dangerous object. I have spent some time, investigating this rugged little Geiger counter. Let me share with you, some of the interesting things that I have discovered. If you are a military device, then being rugged, is actually a major feature. The device enclosure is made from die-cast aluminium, and weighs about 850 grams. It comes in a canvas pouch, and is complete with its original instruction book. This tiny instruction manual, is actually pretty interesting in itself. There are a couple of photographs, stuck into the book, one of the front of the unit and one with the back cover opened. I guess that the printing technology used when they made this booklet, wasn't able to include photographic plates. However, what they were able to include in the instruction manual, is the full electrical schematics of the device, a complete list of components used to build the product, and also repair instructions. You don't get that when you buy an iPhone. The device uses a standard D-type cell, too many of these military counters, use specially designed batteries. So anyone buying military surplus gear, has a real problem to actually use the device. There was also an electroluminescent backlight designed into the display. On my device, this had already failed, but you can see it's still luminescent under ultraviolet light. Speaking of the display, this device uses a logarithmic scale, and uses units of Röntgens per hour. This device, is designed to work with very high dose rates of ionizing radiation. Assuming a whole body exposure of the levels indicated, this device is basically telling the operator how much longer they have until they receive a fatal dose. If the indicator is here on the scale, then you have around 200 hours. If it is here, you have only 20. And, God forbid, you were to ever see this reading, then you will accumulate a fatal dose in just 2 hours. How nice! This is why the check source inside the device, needs to be so highly radioactive. It is also why, in this video there is no testing section, none of the other sources that I own, are capable of even moving the needle on this deathometer. As soon as you open the device, it is obvious just how much effort has gone into making it waterproof. There are decent gasket seals on every mating surface. A nice touch, is the captive screws on the back cover, and simplifies the process of repairing these things in the field. This is the J405 Geiger Muller tube. An energy compensation shroud has been added to it, with a layer of lead tin alloy. The shroud has a hole, which matches the opening of the check source. Speaking of the check source, here is that little piece of Satan, that resides within this device. The check source is activated by pressing the test button. This has a push rod that opens a steel shutter, and then exposes the strontium-90 source directly to the GM tube. Looking at the schematic, you might be tempted to think that this is a very simple circuit. It only has two PNP transistors, but that doesn't stop it being a very clever piece of hardware design. Before the current era, of the cheap MCU, hardware design was a creative art form. This part here, is a self-starting oscillator, which drives a small transformer, and is responsible for generating the three system voltages from the 1.5 volt battery. Here, 
is the 390 volt DC output that drives the GM tube. There is a simple open loop voltage regulator, that uses a neon indicator, to clamp the high voltage tube supply. This is the minus 10 volt supply, that is used for the pulse detector circuit. Here is the pulse amplifier. This part is very clever, it uses a saturatable core transformer to shape the pulses from the GM tube. This next part of the circuit, had me foxed for ages. In the end I had to use a modern circuit simulator to understand how this part works. This is a two-stage logarithmic pulse integrator. In turn, it drives the ammeter which displays the dose rate. And finally, there is the 180 volt AC supply for the electroluminescent backlighting, for the display. Yeah, bloody hell. I don't think this is strontium-90. 22, I think this might be cobalt. Are you quite sure? Um, and what might be very interesting is this could potentially have a cobalt-60 checksum. No, it hasn't. Yep, sounds like it. So, um, this might even be a cobalt-60 check source, because if you see a big solid metal block like this... Frankly, the only solid block in your video is the one between your ears. Removing the strontium-90 test source from the device is one thing, but you have disassembled the protective source holder. That shielding was expressly designed, to prevent idiots like you, from irradiating yourself and those around you. Not only that, you are now handling a naked source, that you know to be highly radioactive, directly with your bare hands. I can stall in whatever it's called breaking radiation. I trust you won't be upset, if you become the recipient of a Darwin Award. Radioactive sources are dangerous because, their effects increase with exposure time. This is why I treat my test sources with a lot of care. The best I can tell, this beta radiation source, has an activity level of about 2 mSv per hour. To put that into context, that is about the whole body dose, that the average person receives, from natural background radiation, in an entire year. This thing emits that same dose in just one hour. Strontium-90, undergoes beta decay to yttrium-90, with a half-life of about 28.8 years. Yttrium-90 also undergoes a beta decay, this time to stable zirconium, with a half-life of just 64 hours. This means, that this source is almost a pure beta radiation emitter, and so, it can be easily shielded with just one or two millimeters of steel, such as the source holder itself. Unless, some idiot decides to remove that. One thing that our little friend, Mr. Weapons and Stuff, did actually get right though. There will be a small amount of gamma radiation released from this source when it is shielded, because of Brackenstollen, 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 Bremstrelung radiation. To demonstrate just how active this source is, I want to show you what happens when I expose it to some of my lower cost detectors. This is the BR6 Geiger counter, a low cost, Chinese device. I have made a review video about this product, if you would like to learn more about this device, please see the link below. Here, you can see that this device reaches the limits of its range of measurement, when exposed, to the strontium-90. I have never seen this device reach its dose rate limits before. This time, I am going to attempt to measure the activity of this check source, using another low-cost counter, the HTT-60. Again, I have a review video for that product on this channel. This detector responds really fast, until it reaches a dose rate of about 800 microsieverts per hour, and then afterwards it begins to slowly integrate up. Eventually, even this detector reaches the limits of its operating range. If I use a gamma ray spectrometer to measure this source, then the measured reading is actually fairly low. This instrument cannot measure any of the beta particles emitted by this check source. 
The 30 microsieverts or so that it records is from the Brackenstollen. That's right, as our friend, the cunning linguist is trying to say, it is from the Bremstrelung radiation, and is mostly composed of X-rays and some lower energy gammas. The Type 75 Geiger counter, harkens back to a more dangerous age in the history of mankind. Hopefully we will never need to actually use equipment like this for real. As a piece of engineering, this device and its smart design, shows me what humanity can achieve, with little more than raw imagination, and a couple of transistors. And what about this chap? Well, he clearly isn't stupid, he knows that what he is doing is dangerous, which makes it irresponsible. Just imagine, if all of his 100,000 dedicated subscribers, all went out and bought things like this, and treated these highly radioactive check sources in the same casual manner. It boggles the mind to think what that might look like as a breaking news headline. What amazes me is, given his very public, laissez-faire attitude to his horde of radioactive artifacts, is that the authorities have not paid him a visit. As a museum piece, I think that the Type 75 is a really nice item. As an instrument, it is pretty pointless, but as a source of strontium-90, it is very useful indeed. I am working on a video about beta spectroscopy, and this new source will be very useful for the experiments that I am planning for that video. Just subscribe to this little channel, to be notified when it's released. I also want to say a big thank you, to one of the subscribers to this channel. The background information that you found, was really very helpful for making this video possible. Anyway, that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed my little video, or at least found some parts of it interesting. If you want to see more of this kind of video, you could always press the subscribe button. This is not a commercial channel, nor will it ever be, so I can say what I want, and YouTube's algorithm can go and get f***ed. Thank you for your time.